Thank you, Chris. And thank you to Words Aloud. Man, what an afternoon. It may stretch into the evening, but it's afternoon. And I am surrounded by Roly Fenwick's painting. And I've known him since in London since uh, I was a child. So I'm in good hands, and it's so wonderful to be with old friends and new and dropsy. Right up to the mic. And I've been doing sound poetry, so I have a sore throat. So I do have plants in the audience at one point we will conjoin. Uh, but, and I also, well, first I'd really like to thank Richard Eve Satowski, Mary Little, um, uh, Tim and Chris, and y y Yvonne, and everyone at Words Loud. Uh, it's so, so wonderful to be well treated and to have time to uh, expand beyond the three minute usual reading limit. However, I thought there might be, because there was a watch a clock yesterday, I expect someone to let me know when 20 minutes is up. Otherwise. Yes, please. Yep. Yeah, usually I can yell, but uh, not today. Um, and I don't have television at home, and I made the mistake of turning on uh, CBS last night. It meant that I didn't sleep. And so I will start with, uh, Rico, are you here? In Come. Um, we have been carefully, carefully planning this for months. <laughs> it's, it's actually a poem for peace that I did and traveled uh, really through India and through Brazil with different languages. And I knew the uh, rhythm of it, the routine of it, so that uh, I could be the orchestra conductor in a, a number of sound poems. And um, even though I didn't know the language whatsoever, but this language I know. Poem for peace in two voices. Calm, come clear of cloud. Early come one come morning, clear of cloud. before things started. Calm oh, came at God. noon, the cardinal Here. perched oh. on black bow in blazing oh. sun. Calm came at night, oh. stretching Here. as cats do. Oh, Constant stretch and change. For oh. Scythia brightened Clear. as the house oh, slept. Now calm, calm, in the face of rule. We actually came through a blizzard with Daniel Colas doing something in Durham in 2002. Um, for World Poetry Day, and it was uh, part of the UN, um, and it was read in 3,000 places around the world. And it's been translated into 136 languages. So I'm going to read one more poem, because one of the joys of being here is that until last night, I have completely forgotten about the world. It was in the realm of poetry, which is my favorite realm of all. But uh, I'm going to read one more called Arms and the Boy. In our time, all the world's worst cliches are actualized in paradox, explosive irony. I am swimming in happiness, rain cocooning my window pane, 
when TV presents unfriendly fire dropping smart bombs far off. I fall through the scream as if to land among proud and elegant peoples divided by civil, uncivil arms, the clans, the earth rent in spring rain. Women and men cleaving cleft, bereft, dispossessed of a West they thought they knew, dis oriented, where do they turn? Shovels at a narrow grave. A 14-year-old boy, skin and bones. Men are burying him when palms crossed. His last gesture, a shiver up inner arms. Two tears run down his cheek. That boy survives but cannot speak. Language is lost, though lies thrive. The next piece I'm going to read is um, one or two, and not quite sure. Something wrong? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Much needed. Um, two haikus that I wrote in Daniel's wonderful class yesterday. It's the second workshop I have ever taken in my entire life. I've become addicted. I give them, I don't take them, but now I'll take them. So, paint, oh, it was driving up with the beautiful Terry Burns. She drove three hours down to London and three hours back with me aboard. And tonight, today, three hours down, without me, she's coming back unless she decides to stay in London. Um, so the, um, it was fascinating yesterday because I did entirely sound and Daniel did entirely image and between the two of us we made poetry. So this is the sketch of, uh, I don't think you're supposed to explain a haiku, so I won't. Painterly sketches fumato in motion, mist on the windshield. Zoom, that's the, that's the response, whoever went. Zoom, <laughs> Zoom ceremony for lost friend. Oh, no, that was the one I had mixed. You didn't hear that. <laughs> Travel lodge window uncleaned for years, opens on crossroads, highlighting fall highlands. <laughs> and um, just to celebrate poetry and poets, I'm going to read one for Mary, but it's not Mary Little, it's Mary D. McKaylee, just so that you know. Two lips. Yellow pollen from her poem collects on these elegant tulips, real as our elbows at the table, where poets and students, so very few, gather to hear new poems courtesy the Canada Council, it must be acknowledged. Mary reads to the collected in the university lounge. I hear voices, she says, and the old room quivers. I hear voices. The ceiling falls into its walls. Some words are no longer Allowed. Some phrases have been relegated to a therapist's cloakroom. If I hear voices, the poem repeats to itself, then ipso facto I am psychotic. Therefore, I cannot, will not hear voices. Mary hears herself in the silence. What have I said, she cries. 
The poets in her audience are responding. Let the voices multiply, let them converse, but do not tell your psychiatrist. Let him or her handle only ordinary neuroses. Leave the comfortable lounge to the adamantine marble academy and what is important to art. Mary retorts, we can only teach technique, not duende. What? Sans our usual subsistence subsidy, won't we poets disappear into teaching trades? or simply disappear. The person that made those comments you would like to know was David McFadden. <laughs> Fair trade. I would eat local food only were it not for temptation, a green invitation of open avocado in the emerald halves, an alluring variety of mango, hot to eye, cool to tongue, the seduction of dark chocolate, the slurp fulfillment of oyster, the simple necessity of rice. Otherwise, I would be content with the yard's fall produce. But having tasted the world's fair, how to return unjaded to simple pleasures that this ground offers. Beans, corn, squash, corn, beans, squash. The si three sisters thrive. Yes, I will eat local food mostly, except for, except for, except chocolate. <laughs> no chicory compares to cafe ole, ole. Import coffee, import tea, import taunt, import taunt. Move on to political rant. Our food too cheap, our farmers ruined, our eyes closed. We rest easy, spoiled ripe fruit on the docks, turning sleepy to sun rotten. Given so much, we reach out for more even when our mouths are full. For when the lunch bell rings, poems break off mid-sentence. Fair trade, fair trade, fair trade. Now this was inspired by my, my open window, a motel room that had a window that opened onto a beautiful landscape of, of the hills at 10 and 10 and Tim Hortons, so what could I do but read this? Ode to Tim, bit swapper. Oh, Tim. Oh, I have to preface one more for Stuart because um, I first taught at Earl Haig in North York and uh, my husband lived, grew up in Willowdale next door to Tim Horton, who was a very nice guy, but he sold out. So that was just, I could have made that just a whisper for you, but now you all know. Oh, Tim, how far you have fallen from fine hockey star and quicksilver skates to purveyor of sludge and sugar and starch even without any golden arch. Oh, Tim, if you'd lived, you'd be fat by now. Plump down on every main drag or mall so tourists can ride from rest stop to rest, expecting their fare everywhere exactly the same. Why travel for variety when comfort is here? Drive through, drive on to the next town. Familiarity never flags when we're in a rush. Forget the fuss of old fogies who lament passing home cooking for simulacra substitution. They'll die off with the trees as you lay waste your cups. 
strew your containers and spread your name far. Overflowing fame translates into dollars, a peon to plastic, and paper debris. Expand, expand, and never explain. Throw out your deals. Don't let customers buy them cheap, sans tax. You have a Canadian reputation to maintain, to keep fresh. Oh, Tim, don't not deity. <laughs> your name lives in bits, <laughs> in bites on Saturday nights, 24-7. We'd bow to you if we could still bend. Fast fueled, we promo you, we expand with you. Oh, sweet, special, oh, rush. Think donut embergered. Think all night bagel breakfast and rejoice. Uh, this is carefully planned, of course. And the next piece I'm going to follow on, I guess, to embrace the seasons that are coming, we know inevitably. And that's good, because if they didn't come, then we'd be in a pickle more than we are. So this is a celebration of another Ilderton London couple. Mirror neurons as if you are leaping in the air with virtue and moir, as if you are running in perfect simulation, lift and fly. Figures are skating, whirling in wild quads like Sufis dancing in dervish reverence. Perfection swirls along an unseen slip of water that allows for glide. Ice two inches thick, blades glint, fantasy hovers, floats flawlessly, describing meticulous arcs on ice in air. Geometry touched by magic, projection spun on glass surface. Le Petit Prince and his rolls crisscross the ice to mirror our neurons effortlessly after ruthless practice. One haptic system it rings in tune with the other, not by happenstance, but by exquisite design, creating the perfect illusion of romance. This pair knows their true trick is always in landing home. I think the, those last two poems, thank you, thank you, were inspired by Daniel again, by uh, the last book I read was um, Bear Man Come Down to Gimli, uh, a bond spiel of a novel in verse that you should buy. And you should buy my work too. <laughs> Um, the CDs are $10 only today. Oh, only. <laughs> um, oh, I, how is our time? Shall we do a sound poem? Do, does anybody know the time? I mean, my time? Speak? Oh. Tell. I mean, when, when did we start then? We started after 12. Well, I, I know that. Yeah. Way after 12. It was, thank you, Brittany. A teacher speaks. <laughs> we know the clock. All right. I have plants in this audience. Do you have water at the ready? I thanks to Chris do. This is my last piece. It was performed by 16 voices all doing different sounds. So uh, oh, good, you're here. Um, uh, 
I'm looking for my plants and I can't see, so it's, it's picking up auras. Um, this, the, the plants say once in various tonalities. Wait, I am the conductor. <laughs> you should have heard this in Swahili and in Punjabi. So your is, except for the plants, the plants do as they wish. Loudly is allowed. Much fun to be with you, and thank you again for participating. I could have had a few solos, but uh, now's your chance. Once, anybody? Once? Once and again. Now I can enjoy the rest of the afternoon. 